Good morning and welcome to worship. We are glad to see you again in person as we gather in the sanctuary once again. And we also have our Facebook Live audience. So if you're joining us on Facebook Live, they are right here in front of us. Uh, so we are glad for all of you to be here in worship, whether in person or online. Thank you for your continued patience as we figure out new things. We gathered in person three weeks ago and we had a plan for the next week and thought we'd figured out the microphones and then we had to suspend in person. And so I told Chris this week, now I'm trying to remember what we said we were going to do. So hopefully we have it right. If you're watching on Facebook Live and you can't hear, you can't see, let us know. We'll try to fix it during the service if we can. If not, at least then we'll know for next time. So uh, please do let us know um, your experience so that we can improve and we can continue to figure out the best way to worship in these unusual times. 
Thank you for following precautions. I know that it's some extra steps, but thank you for your willingness to do that. Um, you probably know that the reason we suspended worship for a couple of weeks is we had someone who had attended who tested positive for the virus. And I think it's a great sign that as far as I know, no one else tested positive. And so that tells me I hope that we're doing something right, that our precautions are working or that we were very lucky, one or the other. But we'll take it either way. Um, and we will continue to follow those precautions to do the best that we can to protect one another. I do want to welcome you finally to the new church year. We started our new church year October 1st, so this is our first in-person gathering. Usually we start the church year in June, but it was delayed this year, so we would have a little more time to get our committees together. So thank you to those who are serving this year. Our deacons have their first meeting of the new church year today. Um, you should have gotten a uh, or in the in the email on Wednesday, and also I believe I guess it'll be in the newsletter this week. It has our list of new deacons and what their flocks are. You should be hearing from your deacon soon, but you can check that list in the email to know who your deacon is for this coming year. I did learn last night of a prayer concern I want to share with you. Uh, Richard Hawk is at St. Francis Hospital with congestive heart failure. Uh, Nell told me he is doing better. He went in over the weekend and they were treating him and she said he was already showing improvement. He is hopeful that he'll come home tomorrow. And so she didn't know for sure yet, but did ask that I share that with the church family and that we pray for Richard Hawk and for Nell and all of their family. So as we gather this morning to worship, I know we come with other prayer concerns, with joys and celebrations and burdens in our hearts. And so let us lift all of those up to God as we go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Faithful God, we give you thanks that you are with us always. We know that even when we have been uh, unable to be together in person, and even though we continue to be separated from many of our uh, beloved brothers and sisters who are part of our church family. We know, God, that you are with us. You are with us here in this building. You are with us in our homes. You are with us wherever we go. And we lean on your presence, especially now, God, in these troubling times, in the challenges of this year. We lean on you for our strength, for our hope, and for our joy. And we pray, God, that as we worship together this day, you would renew our strength, you would renew our hope, you would fill us with joy. Help us, God, to hold on to joy in you in these times when joy can feel difficult to find and difficult to hold on to. We know, God, that you are with us. And so help us to, uh, to sense your joy and your presence and your love. And we pray, God, that these gifts of yours will sustain us through these days and through the days to come. Be with us as we worship and help us to worship you with our whole hearts, whether we worship here in this building, whether we are worshiping remotely and joining online, wherever we are, however we are worshiping, may we worship you in spirit and truth and with our whole hearts. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
joy it is to be with you all brothers and sisters in the sanctuary after such a long time let's hear now what we um 
listen to from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 13. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God. So the Bible verse that Miss uh, Peggy read talked about joy. So I'm going to read that again. It says, and all of that, the pages flipped over. Where did it go? All right. The Bible verse says, always be glad because of the Lord. I will say it again, be glad. And the version that Miss Peggy read used the word rejoice. And so that Bible verse tells us to always be glad, always rejoice. And so I brought something that we often see at celebrations. I brought a balloon. Have you ever had a balloon that got away from you, that floated away up into the sky before you were ready to let it go? Sometimes I think that's what it feels like to try to be glad when bad things are happening, when things aren't happening the way you want them to. It feels like joy is floating away like a balloon. But in the Bible passage that we read today, Paul tells us a secret. And Paul says, this is the secret to holding on to joy, to being glad even when hard things are happening. So I'm going to read you the secret. Here is the secret. Paul says, the secret is Christ gives me the strength to face anything. And so that is the secret of holding on to joy when joy feels like it's escaping us. Jesus gives us the strength to do anything. So that is the promise that we have. That is the hope that we have. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for the joy that you give us and help us to celebrate and be glad because Jesus is with us. Amen. As we continue in worship, um, let me invite you to join in prayer. Um, you will recognize the words of this familiar hymn, Be Thou My Vision. <laughs>
solution, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that Thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, Thy presence Thou my wisdom, and Thou my true word, I ever with Thee, and Thou with me, Lord. Thou my great Father, and I Thy true Son. Thou in me dwelling, and I with Riches I heed not, no man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance, now and always. Thou and now only, first in my heart. High King of heaven, treasure thou art. High King of Heaven, my victory won, may I reach heaven joys, all bright and sun, heart of my own heart, whatever before, still be my vision. You may have noticed in your bulletin, or the theme was the same in the children's sermon, but our sermon title today is Clinging to Joy in This Crazy World. And I have to give credit to Allie Willoughby for our sermon title. You may remember back in May, we asked our graduates to record a short video of themselves talking about what their future plans were. And Allie graduated from Clemson last December, and she has been serving in Baltimore, Maryland, as part of the AmeriCorps program. And so for her video, she was in Baltimore with the city behind her. You could see the city behind her, and she was talking about how COVID-19 had changed 
changed her volunteer plans in the city because she couldn't do the job that she had originally uh, been assigned to do. And then at the end, she spoke about what would be next after her term with AmeriCorps ended. And she threw her arms up in the air with the Baltimore skyline behind her and said, but who knows in this crazy world? And I have often thought about that over these last seven months. I think that sentiment is something that uh, resonates with all of us. Who knows in this crazy world? Are we going to school? Are we going to church? Are we going to have football games? How often over these past seven months have we said, we'll just have to wait and see because who knows with this crazy world? In these last few months, things have changed repeatedly and frequently, and then they change again. We make plans, we take into account all of the extra precautions and extra steps we need to take, and then something changes and we have to redo all of those plans. We experienced this as a church a few weeks ago when we resumed in-person worship for one Sunday, and then we had to go back to online worship for a couple of weeks. I just heard the other day about a church in North Carolina who had a very similar experience. They were supposed to resume in-person gatherings today and a staff member tested positive unexpectedly, no symptoms, but they had to redo all of their plans. So we are not alone in this. We share this experience with many, many people. But it is wearisome to be consistently asking, who knows in this crazy world? The extra effort required of us right now, figuring out what precautions we need to take, taking those precautions, and then changing our plans takes a toll. And I imagine many of us are tired. We're tired of all of those extra steps. We just want to be able to go and do things and things be simple again. We're tired of the worry. We're tired of the endless debates and disagreements about what needs to be done or what doesn't. We are ready for all of this to just go away. And yet, we continue to live in this crazy world in these crazy times. And so how, as people of faith, can we persevere with hope and even with joy? How can we hold on to our joy in this crazy world? The book of Philippians frequently returns to the theme of joy. Paul begins in chapter 1 writing about praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you. And here in chapter 4, Paul says, Rejoice always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoicing may not be our go-to response these days in this crazy world. It can be hard to find the strength, the energy, the motivation to rejoice when there is so much fear and worry and uncertainty. Yet, Paul lets us in on a secret. He writes to the Philippians of his joy and thankfulness for their generosity in caring for Paul. Remember that Paul is in prison, and he would have been reliant upon the generosity of others for his basic needs. There was no prison system bringing him food every day and other necessities. Paul's life depended upon the kindness of friends. And so Paul is deeply grateful for the Philippians, for the support they have sent him. But even so, he is quick to add that his joy is not dependent on having his needs met. What the Philippians have done for him is a gracious gift and much appreciated, but Paul's joy and peace and hope do not depend on it. Instead, Paul writes this, I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. The secret of clinging to joy in this crazy world is that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. That is where joy is to be found. In 2020, I think that means we can endure the differences and challenges that this year has brought. We can keep taking those extra precautions. We can change our plans when we need to. We can make adjustments even though we are tired of this because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. 
even things that are uncomfortable, that are wearisome, that are challenging. Part of what I hear Paul doing in this passage is taking responsibility for his own spiritual health and growth. He thanks the Philippians for the ways that they have helped him, and he acknowledges that their help has been a blessing, but he is clear that they are not responsible for his joy. He says he can rejoice in Christ even when he has little. And so while he is thankful for this gift, he is not dependent upon it for spiritual strength and peace and joy. He may be dependent upon it physically, but spiritually his joy comes from a deeper source, from Christ. How often do we blame others for our lack of joy? This year especially, I think many of us have found it difficult to rejoice because of how others are responding to the crisis of a global pandemic. Whether we think others are worrying too much, or we think they're worrying about the wrong thing, or we think they're not taking it seriously enough, for whatever reason, we sometimes get caught up in the response of others and it takes away our joy. We lose sight of Paul's secret that we can do all things, even rejoice through Christ who strengthens us. And of course, this happens with other things as well, with other issues and other concerns. We get caught up in what others are doing or not doing, and that takes away our joy. But Paul says he's not dependent on what the Philippians do or don't do for his joy and strength because that comes only from Christ. And that is the reason we can cling to joy in this crazy world, because of Jesus. Jesus, who also experienced the pain and challenges of this world. Jesus, who also experienced the abandonment of his friends. Jesus, who also experienced loneliness. Jesus gives us strength and joy. But as we know, and as Paul knew, joy in Christ does not mean, does not guarantee, does not require an absence of conflict. Earlier in Philippians chapter 4, Paul wrote this, I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women For they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Peggy, I was not going to ask you to read those names, and so I started the reading after those, and I had to look up how to pronounce them, and it may not be right. In fact, one of the podcasts I was listening to this week about the scripture had a whole conversation about how do you pronounce these names anyway? And so it's not not a given, but that's not the deepest concern. The deepest concern is what's going on here? What is Paul addressing here? Even in the church of Philippi, for all of its joy and generosity, there was conflict. We do not know what the problem was, but some difference had surfaced between these two women, Euodia and Syntyche. Notice how Paul acknowledges their contributions to the gospel work. He says, they have labored beside me. He does not tell them to be quiet. He does not criticize their role in the church. He simply acknowledges there is a problem here. There is a division. They're not of the same mind. And he asks for help from others in the church. He asks for unity. And he reminds the Philippians that these leaders are redeemed by Christ. Their names are written in the book of life. This conflict does not disqualify them from God's kingdom. What if we, the church of 2020, could approach conflict this way? Rather than seeking to place blame or to criticize the actions of others, what if we sought to be of the same mind in the Lord? The reality is there are differences among us. We, as individuals in a community of faith, have different opinions. We have different views about various things. And it's hard to engage in tough conversations about serious topics. But friends, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Paul tells us a way to do this in verses 8 and 9. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. 
Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. How can we look for the good in others, even those with whom we disagree? Our culture seems to have adopted this idea that if someone disagrees with us, that not only are they wrong, but they are evil. We see evidence of this in the political ads that we see these days. There is a vilification of character. It's not just they have the wrong idea, they have the wrong approach. It's something about them is wrong, is evil. And we see this happen sometimes even within the church, within the body of Christ. We have different opinions, and sometimes we intentionally or unintentionally vilify people because they have a different viewpoint. We may think they have no morals, or they have the wrong morals, or they're trying to push their morals on everybody else. But what is really happening when there are disagreements among followers of Jesus is that we have different interpretations of what it means to be faithful to Jesus in this time and place. And we see this in conversations in the church, we see this in politics, we see this in various issues that Christians can have different interpretations of what it means to be faithful to Jesus in this time and place. And that's challenging because some of these interpretations are deeply held and deeply held onto and it's hard to hear from someone else who sees it differently and yet to still recognize Christ in them and the work of God in them. And it is hard, yet we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so I want to challenge you this week, when you encounter someone with whom you have a difference, with whom perhaps you have a division, with whom you are, like Euodia and Syntyche, not of the same mind in the Lord, read Philippians 4, 8, and 9. And as you think about them, and as you think about the disagreement that you have, look for what is true, what is honorable, what is just, what is pure, what is pleasing, what is commendable, what is excellent and worthy of praise, both about that person and about the perspective with which you disagree. Sometimes we have more common ground than we realize. Look for these attributes of goodness and truth and honor and think about these things. This is where Paul tells us peace is to be found. And in these things, in thinking about the goodness and honor and truth and justice, we find the strength of Christ and we find joy. This is how we can hold on to joy in this crazy world. And so keep holding on, keep clinging to that joy. And friends, let's hold on together, because God is still at work among us, even in this crazy world. Let us pray. God, we thank you that you are a great God, and that you are a God who can make us of the same mind in Christ, as Paul writes, even when we can be so different and have different experiences and different perspectives. And yet we pray, God, that we would submit all that we are to you, that we would turn to you, that we would give you our worries, our hopes, our pride, our expectations, that we would give all of it to you, that you might transform us, that you might help us to be the disciples of Jesus that you have called us to be. And help us, God, to allow ourselves to find peace and joy in surprising ways through the gift and the transformation offered by your Holy Spirit. We pray, God, that you would lead us and guide us in these challenging times in our world, in our culture, in our country, and help us to follow you no matter the cost. Help us to listen to you and help us to love one another, even when we may be following you differently. Help us to love our neighbors as you have loved us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
This morning, I want to invite you to respond to the message of joy and hope that we have heard through Philippians. And you may respond in many different ways. A couple of weeks ago, I had mentioned if you would like to respond by sharing something with me. We won't do it here because this space is too small to do that safely. But contact me during the week and we can uh, talk on the phone or we can make a time to meet at a social distance. And I was able to do that a couple of weeks ago with Hannah and Hayden Maxey and then they expressed their desire to join the church. And so they joined the church as part of our Facebook service a couple of weeks ago. And so if you weren't able to join us on Facebook, join me in celebrating Hannah and Hayden, Ma- and Hayden Maxey as members of our church family. And so I would encourage you, if you have something you would like to share with me, whether you're joining us by Facebook or whether you're here in person, if you'd like me to pray with you about something specific, reach out to me during the week. Or if you're here today, we can talk out on the front lawn in just a minute. There are ways we can continue to be in community and to respond together as a family of faith, even though we won't do it here at the altar table in the same place as we usually have. I would also encourage you to respond by giving an offering to our church to continue to support the work of our church here in our church and in the community. In a moment, we'll have an offertory prayer and we'll have an offertory piece of music. Uh, But rather than passing the plates, I'll invite you to spend that time to prepare your offering. If you have uh, your materials with you, you can give online on your phone. There's instructions about that in your worship guide. Or you can just spend a few moments praying about how God might be calling you to respond to this message of joy and hope in Christ. And so let me invite you to enter into this time of invitation, this time of offering, this time of giving. How is it God is calling you to give and to respond to the message of Jesus that God has given to you? Let us reflect and respond as God leads. Before I pray the offertory prayer, I would like to share with you the text from the offertory that Richard and I are going to play in a little bit. Uh, It's drawn from a scripture passage that Jennifer preached from just a couple of weeks ago as we have been in the book of Philippians. This is drawn from Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 11. And our choir members will recognize it. This is an anthem that we have sung. And so, uh, choir, we were thinking about you as we picked this out as well, uh, but, but uh, let me share this text with you uh, so you will be able to um, pray and think on these words uh, even as we enter this time of offering. Jesus, though he was God, did not cling to his rights as God, but laid aside his mighty power, his mighty power and glory, taking the form of a servant and becoming like men. He humbled himself, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. At the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and in earth. At the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and in earth. And then it repeats that, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, at the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus. Will you pray with me? Jesus, our Savior, I give you thanks for this reminder that in this crazy world where things are changing, where plans are changing, where so much seems uncertain, that you have not changed that you are still God and that you are still with us. And so we give you thanks this morning, Lord. We give you thanks that you remind us that you have faced the worst this world had to offer, even death on a cross, and you have overcome it with resurrection. 
And so with faith and hope and love, with gratitude, we enter in this time of offering. We pray, Lord, that you would take our time, our talents, our finances, and our lives and use them, Lord. We pray that you would multiply the gifts that we give and use them to bring glory to you and to bring comfort and hope to your people as we express our love for you and our love for our neighbor. Hear our prayer, Lord. Receive our offering. Bless it and use it for your glory. In Christ's name we pray and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Breathe. 
remain standing for just a moment we do plan to be back next Sunday we'll let you know if that changes but our plan is to be here in the sanctuary again next Sunday at 11 and also on Facebook live this Wednesday night October 21st we're having our quarterly church conference for October on zoom and so you can join us online or you can call in by phone we will send out the agenda and the written reports on Wednesday in an email. They have already been mailed to those who do not receive email. So if you do not get one by Tuesday, call the church office and we will figure out a way to get one to you before Wednesday night. But that is our quarterly church conference will be by phone or video call on Wednesday night. Um, I did want to mention we have flowers in the sanctuary today in celebration of David Volgamont's birthday. And also today is Pat Evans' birthday and her daughter Grace is going to have her on her, the porch of her house today from 12 to 1 and has invited the church family to stop by and wish her a happy birthday from a distance. And so if you were able to do that, I know Pat would appreciate that. But we do wish both of them a happy birthday um, as we continue in this time of distance. Um, if you are planning to join us in worship and you are able to help by volunteering as a greeter or as a scripture reader, if you'd like to do that, let me know. We're trying to do that very flexibly, knowing that a lot of our regulars are not yet ready for that. And you may be ready to come, but not ready to do that. And that's fine. Uh, but if you are, are interested in that, just let me know because we could use some volunteers as we're worshiping in some different ways these days. Any other announcements? That's all right, well, let me invite you to hear this word of benediction. Depart now in the fellowship of God the Father, remembering as you go, by the goodness of God, you have been brought into this world. By the grace of God, you have been kept all the day long, even until this hour. And by the love of God, fully revealed in the face of Jesus, you are being redeemed. Amen.